If you follow our travel videos, you might remember when we were traveling between Nashville and Ohio, we mentioned a brake issue and I said I would follow up. This is that follow up. I'm going to warn you right up front. This is really, really a strange one that defies logic. So I encourage you to stick with me through my troubleshooting process and see maybe if you can poke some holes in it because I'm going to need your feedback on this one down in the comments below. A little background on what we're dealing with here as far as brakes. We have the Moride Independent Suspension System. We liked it so much on our 397. We did a whole video on that, by the way, if you're interested in before and after stock suspension versus the Moride Independent Suspension. It was really pretty spectacular. But we liked that suspension and brake system so much we had it put on our 410 before we got it. So we've had six Kodiak disc brakes connected to a 1600 PSI uh, electric over hydraulic brake controller by Hydrostar. And that is our braking system that we're troubleshooting and talking about here. I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm getting very little brake pressure when I hit the manual controller. And I can kind of feel that the truck is doing the majority of the braking. Brake actuator is coming on, I can hear it. I'm waiting for a call back from someone at Moride to help me troubleshoot this. While we were at that rest area when I had first noticed it, I did a little bit of preliminary troubleshooting. Number one, the brake actuator was making sounds like it normally would, so I felt like it was getting power and signal. I looked all over the suspension and brake system looking for anything obvious, any leaking fluid, any uh, brake fluid you know, on the ground, anything loose like loose hydraulic lines. I looked for anything obvious and didn't see anything. Also, just to eliminate it as a potential issue, I disconnected the little control adapter that adapts our rear brake lights that we installed, those strips, to the brake controller just to eliminate it as a possibility. I disconnected those entirely so they were completely out of the picture. If you're curious about that video and those taillights, I'll have a link down in the description below. While we're talking about that little adapter, several of you have reached out and said that that adapter is no longer available and I have confirmed that. And at this particular time, I have no replacement, unfortunately. I haven't been able to find anything. If any of you guys know or have found some, please let me know. If you guys report one or I find one, I will update the blog post like I do per usual. Of course, I also checked our seven-way connection and made sure that was nice and secure. I went ahead and also sprayed some contact cleaner in there and let that dry out and reconnected it. Didn't seem to have any effect. I also went through our settings in the brake controller to make sure that it was, you know, electric over hydraulic and all those settings were good. Since I didn't really find anything obvious, we went ahead and finished our about two hours left of travel that day getting into Ohio with diminished brakes. How do the brakes feel? That's safe. Now I'm calling this diminished brakes instead of completely failed brakes because that's really what we're dealing with here. Normally when I would say get up to like five miles per hour and I squeeze that brake controller, the RV would stop. What we would get is a little bit of a slowdown. So the brakes were still working, just not as strong as I would like them to be as really as much as I need them to be. But we made it to our mooch docking location in Ohio safely. And that was going to give me a couple of weeks to troubleshoot this thing. I had a pretty good idea about how I was going to go about troubleshooting this thing based on the symptoms, but I did reach out to Moride and, and talked to their support just to kind of confirm I was going to head down the right path. Before I get into the troubleshooting, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. That would really help us out a lot. Give this video a thumbs up and also click that notification bell if you want to be notified when we release new videos do those things, we would really appreciate it. Step one in this troubleshooting was to inspect the actual brake system itself. I started by checking just the simplest thing. I checked the pads. All the pads were worn down for some reason that could cause, you know, diminished braking like I was seeing. However, those all looked great. The next step was to bleed the hydraulic lines, bleed those brake lines for the braking system because it was kind of behaving like it had air in the lines. You know, when you've got air in the lines, the air compresses and doesn't let the hydraulic fluid push hard enough on those calipers to actually press on those disc brakes and stop. Because this particular symptom was across all six wheels, none of them seemed to be stopping properly. I suspected that, you know, if I did have air in the lines, it would be somewhere in the common area that fed all six brakes. I did, however, bleed all six brakes independently and, you know, I got no air. I was really hoping to get that little sputter when air comes through the line and be like, oh yeah, that was probably it. But nothing. It was just solid brake fluid 
all the way through bleeding all six brakes. The next step was to check the voltage from the brake controller to make sure that was all good. I decided it was best to just check it right at the actuator and work my way back to the truck if I found the problem. Because the lines from the brake controller that go into the actuator go right inside the body of the unit, there's really no place to test on there. I cut the wires where they were crimped so that I could get access to those for the voltages. A quick little background on how this actuator works before I dig into what my voltage readings were. The way the controller communicates with the actuator is through four lines, technically three, really only one, but we've got four lines going into the actuator. One of them is just a ground. One of them is also a DC power source that should always be 12 volts or more. That comes from the RV power supply DC side, of course. Next is a breakaway cable connection. That will have 12 volts on it if the breakaway plunger is pulled. Obviously that only happens if the trailer is in a bad situation and has departed the truck. The fourth wire and the one that I'm really hoping to find some trouble on is the control wire. And that will have a variable voltage from zero to 12 volts, depending on how much braking power the controller is trying to apply. So I'm hoping to find a problem there. So my readings were as follows. On the black line, which is the power supply line from the RV, I read 13.8 volts. That makes sense because we're talking about a lithium system here, so that was perfect. On the breakaway cable line, I read zero volts, and that's expected because the pin is in the little release mechanism there. When I pull the pin, I read 12 point something volts, which is what I expect. On the blue line in question, the one that actually sends the control voltage, I was hoping to get a bad reading there, but I didn't. What I read was about 6.2 volts when I actually stepped on the brake. And if I pressed the brake controller all the way, I got like 12.7 volts. And that is exactly what I expect. You know, I'm sitting still, I'm not moving. I press the brake, you know, the controller is gonna send some voltage, but it's not gonna need a lot because it knows I'm going zero. But when I press the brake controller, this basically says max brakes. I was getting the 12.7 volts there, which is what I expect. So all that is just good, it's fine. So at this point, I've eliminated from the actuator back through the brakes and you know, the brake pads and all that. I've eliminated from the actuator to the truck. All the voltages there are, are coming in fine. There's really no need to go read voltages at the seven way or in the junction box on the RV or anything like that because I'm getting good voltages at the actuator. So I called Moride with, with my findings they thought it was really strange, just as did I, but really the only thing left at that point is the actuator itself. So I got the new actuator, and while I knew it was gonna be some work, I was stoked because I thought for sure this was gonna fix our problem. But before I go and pull this actuator out and you know have to deal with all the re-bleeding of the entire system, I wanted to give the other actuator another test, uh, primarily because I didn't get good footage of it failing and I wanted to kind of quantify that for you guys and then show you, you know, how it's behaving. Basically what it was is when I would press the brake controller, it would slow down a little bit. It wouldn't stop the RV like it's supposed to. So of course, to test this, I had to reconnect all of the original wires to the original actuator, hook up the truck and test. So I've got the brake actuator hooked back up. I had disconnected and cut those wires so I could get good readings on them. Uh, there was really no other break in the line where I could get good readings. So I did that. All the readings look great. So I'm going to hook up the truck. I'm not going to worry about the Volta system. Uh, I'm just going to hook up the truck and see if I can pull away. Now, if you're wondering, yes, I am going to do a pull test even when just hitching for this. Because you know what? The RV can fall onto the truck in this test or when I'm hooking up to really tow. It doesn't really matter. So basically what I'm doing here, it's just like a pull check. I close this, which gives me maximum brakes. And in the past, that would be enough to stop the RV. So let's give it a try. I'll put you guys here so you can see what's going on. I'm in drive. I am holding the brake. the heck 
So that's the look of confusion on my face that you see because as you might have gathered from this test, it worked perfectly. It didn't fail at all like it was doing before. I was so confused. In case you're wondering, that was the sound of everything working. Maybe I had a bad crimp in there giving me uh, not enough voltage. I'm gonna give this another try. I'm gonna pull forward a couple of feet, go back, try a couple things here. Apparently just cutting and re-splicing those lines fixed it. I mean, I've heard of having like cold solders before and bad crimps, but I wouldn't think it would be bad enough to make the brakes just not work. That's weird. I can think of really only one reason why cutting and re-splicing those wires might have helped. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute, but first. Okay, so I got everything set back up. I got auto leveled, I got the slides out. And then I was explaining the situation to Tara and she said, are you sure it's not those brake controller things that we put on when we did our tail lights? And I forgot I had disconnected both of these just as a process of elimination, just to make sure there wasn't anything in this controller module messing with the brake controller. So I, I want to hook these back up and retest and make sure the brakes still work. I mean, I had these off when I tested last time, the last several times I've tested. When it failed, I had these out. So I don't think it's these, but I got to make sure because we have a video out on these. and We never, ever want to give anybody some advice that does something detrimental to their RV, like disable the trailer brakes. So I'm going to hook these back up and we're going to do this test all over again. So now, I will hook the truck back up. Go for a ride. I just checked and I did still get the trailer connected thing in the truck. So I don't think it's disabling the brake controller or anything like that, but I'm still gonna do uh, a test. And because I got off and on the hitch, guess what? Pull test again. While I've got this connected, let's just go ahead and do a light check. Oh yeah. All right, comes the test. Good champ. Okay, well, uh, that's good actually. I'm really, really glad that that test succeeded because if it didn't, it would mean that those uh, little brake controller, not, not brake controllers, little uh, brake light, tail light adapters, we'll call them adapters, um, for the braking system are working and not disabling our brakes. So whew, that's good. Why they stopped working in the first place, I don't know. So it's just magically working. Uh, but like I mentioned, I have one more thing that we can check and those are the original splices that I cut out from the wiring when I went to test it the first time. I've got all three crimps here. So you can see, this is my brake controller uh, line, the blue one. But I've got all three here. So I'm just gonna do a continuity test, an ohm reading, if you will, to see if any of these crimps have resistance. All right, here's the red wire, red to black, which is my constant 12 volt DC source, zero ohms. This is my breakaway cable, zero ohms. Here's the one in question, the one for the actual controller, zeros. So I don't know, man, this is just weird. I would love to have seen at least some resistance on the blue wire there, so I don't get it. So here we are. The brakes are working perfectly and I have no idea why. Stuff like this is super, super frustrating because I would much rather have found the issue and fixed it. When an issue just fixes itself, whatever caused it to break may rear its ugly head again. Who knows? But Moride said that we could hang on to this extra actuator in case it happens again and I wanted to swap that out as a potential fix. And while we, of course, always check our brakes while we're leaving, I usually did that just by stopping. What I'm doing now is whenever we depart a location, I am testing the trailer brakes by themselves. So all we can do at this point is just kind of keep an eye on it and make sure they don't fail again. 
But let me know what you think about this. Did I miss anything? Did I miss a step? Did I forget to check something? Uh, is there something else that you would have checked? Please let me know in the comments down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss the next video, and we'll see you next time.